My name is Kennelly, Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. I was working my day tour, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. It was a clear, sunny day and pleasantly cool for the time of the year. When I came into the station house at 7.35, I went directly into my office and changed the uniform. Then I sat down at my desk to go over reports and communications that had piled up since I was last on duty 24 hours before. Sharply at 8, I got up and walked out into the muster room where I turned out the platoon for the day tour. After the men who would patrol the precinct for the next eight hours marched out the front door to take over their post, I remained behind the desk for a few minutes talking to Lieutenant Gorman, who would be desk officer during the tour. The sergeant on PS duty sat at the switchboard several feet away. Uh, what time will you have to be there, Red? It's a fan at 10 a.m., Captain. I ought to leave here about 9.30. I don't know what they have to subpoena me down at the grand jury for. In that case, anyway. Well, I suppose they want to definitely establish what property he had on his person when he was arrested. Yes, sir. Uh, who's taking the desk when you leave? Okay. Well, Captain Sergeant Collins is taking the desk. Sergeant Waters will supervise the patrol and we're bringing in under with the PSC. Okay. I should be back before noon. Excuse me, who am I supposed to see? What's trouble, man? Well, I found this tag on the steering wheel of my car. I want to thank you very much. See, I parked my car last night and I forgot to take the keys out. I really appreciate the police doing something about it. Even a tag like this is a very good idea. Can I see the tag, please? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Glad it's sitting on there where to come. Yeah, I've lived in the neighborhood for four years and I always thought the police station on 51st Street was the one for my house. Do you have the registration for your car? Yeah, sure. I've got it right here. Yeah. Oh, sorry, it's my face. Uh, I'd like to see your operator's license, too, please. Oh, I'll keep them both together on the other side of that traffic. Thank you. A wonderful service of the police. Take the keys out of the car and leave a tag like that so the people won't get worried. Would you mind signing your name on this pad, Miss Keeson? Why? I just want to compare the signatures with those in your license for identification. Oh, of course not. I agree with you. Don't be too careful. Yeah. You can't just give the key to anybody who walks into the police station and asks for them, can you? No, you can't. Where are your keys? Thank you. I'm yeah, much obliged to you. This is a real fine service on the part of the police. I appreciate it. And this is for you, too, Miss Keaton. Oh, what's that? It's a summons for you to appear in court next Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Summons? Thank you. You can leave the motor vehicle standing unattended. Three minutes for the ignition key in the lot, please. The violation of the administrative code. You mean you're giving me your ticket? That's what you want to call it. Yes, Miss Susan. Oh, I like that. It's an offense to leave the keys in your car. But I just forgot. Well, you forgot, and someone might have stolen it. If the officer hadn't picked them up first. Well, I think it's a lot of nerve to give me a ticket over something like that. After all, it's my car. If I wanted to leave my keys in it, I could do it. But I didn't want to. I just forgot. And uh, you won't forget next time, will you? I don't see why I have to go to the trouble and pay a fine and everything like that. I thought taking the keys out of the car and bringing them to the police station just a service. It is a service, Miss Keaton. We probably prevented your car from being stolen. Well, I call it anything but a service. You're welcome, Miss Keeson. Well, I thought we'd gained a friend, Captain. You did, until you handed her the summer. From hero to bum, and one easy left. Oh, uh, one hard summer. Uh, who's the 124 man on the job this tour? Helen, Captain. Will you tell him to come into my office? The yes, sir. Away? I've got to send the 49 down to the license division. Okay, I'll send him right in, Captain. All right, fine. Oh, Captain. Yes, Sergeant. We're going to leave her. Oh, where is this? Well, she hasn't jumped yet, Captain. She's sitting on the ledge of her apartment building outside the window. 781 East 6060. Is the emergency squad on the way? Yes, sir. Communications zero. Got the call direct. All right. Have a car come around for me. Yes, sir, Captain. Right away. Suicide or attempted suicide is a serious problem. But its seriousness is multiplied several times because an individual in that frame of mind generally has no regard for other lives. In the city of New York, it is not unusual for an innocent pedestrian to be killed or injured when a suicide leaps from a high building. Still more common are explosions resulting from gas suicide. To the police, the problem is as much protection of the general public as rescue of the person intent upon destroying himself. For this end and other rescue work, the police department maintains 13 emergency service squads. 
Assigned to each of these 13 squads are three sergeants and 24 patrolmen, especially trained for the work. Each squad is equipped with two radio emergency patrol cars and its cuffs, all constructed according to specifications. The cars, which carry light rescue equipment, are on constant patrol of the district to which they are assigned. The 13 trucks garaged throughout the city respond to the scene of an emergency whenever heavier rescue equipment or additional men are needed. When the RMP car, which had picked me up at the station house, arrived in the block, one of the radio emergency patrol cars was already on the job. So were sector cars number two and number five, and the sergeant's car from the 21st. Two men had been assigned to keep the sidewalk in front of 781 clear, but a crowd of people was beginning to gather across the street. Their eyes were fixed on the 11th floor of the apartment building. I instructed Patrolman Coley, the operator of my car, to pull in. All right. Get busy over there, Coley. Help keep those people back. Go on, get across the street. Sergeant. Sergeant Waters. Uh, go on, get across the street. This is no place for you. Get over there. Hello, Captain. How long has you been sitting there, Sergeant? It's ten after eight, Captain. Now, what floor is that? The eleventh. What about life net? I just came downstairs to check to see what's holding up the emergency truck, Captain. We'll get the nets up as soon as they get here. Uh, you want to come up? Oh. Yeah. My name is Mrs. Elizabeth Wolsey. The neighbor tells me she's about 50 years old. Uh-huh. All right, get on a job over there. All right, the people walk down this way, will you? Go okay. on. Okay, Captain. Go ahead, Captain. Uh, she's a widow. Lives here alone. Uh, the elevator's back there, Captain. How close can you get to her? We're in the next apartment, Captain. We can get close enough to talk to her, that's about all. Uh, looking out the window, that is. Uh-huh. What about her front door? It's locked from the inside. I see. Going up, gentlemen? Yeah, we're going up. What excitement around here this morning, huh? I'm glad every day isn't like this. Eleven. Now, this thing is bugged. I could have told you she was bugged. Plain nuts. She's like a recluse, you know? You mean she never comes out of the apartment? Oh, she comes out, all right. She just don't talk to nobody when she does. It takes like a crowbar to get a good morning out of her. Uh, Waters, who's on the job up there? Well, uh, Meister was the first man here. Started his talk, so he's still doing it. I saw his Lieutenant King. He was out on patrol and responded. He came up. He's talking to us, too. You think they'll be able to talk her back in? You're going to have some job. Eleven. Who are those men? Some of ours, Captain, and some from the Emergency Service Division. All right, you men, get it down. Just keep it quiet. You make too much noise out here in the hall, she's liable to hear you and jump. Hey, this way, Captain. That's her door, Captain. All right. Keep these men posted here. Yes, sir. As soon as the emergency truck comes, we'll have the men with the bars and axes here to break it down if we have to. Okay. The next door here is Mrs. Westall. That's where we are. We're talking to her through Mrs. Westall's front window. Okay. Uh, in here. That's Mrs. Westall there. Uh, Mrs. Westall. Mrs. Westall, this is Captain Kennelly, commanding officer of 21st Precinct. Oh, how do you do, Captain? This is awful, isn't it? Yes, it is. I'm sorry to have my men going through your apartment. That's all right. I'm glad to do what I can. Poor little thing. I never knew she was so troubled. I never had any idea. Uh, you know her very well? No, hardly more than tonight, Abby. We've been living here four years, and she's here longer than that. She's never been in my apartment. I've never been in hers. I see. You think you're going to be able to do something? I mean, it'd be awful if she jumped. Well, we're going to try. Do you want to take a look at it? Yeah. Excuse me, Mrs. Westall. Yes, of course. Now, aren't you getting hungry out there, Mrs. Wolfram? And cold? Why don't you come inside and get a nice cup of coffee? Hello, man. Captain. Nice cup of coffee and some hot What about the emergency truck, Sergeant? It's on the way, Lieutenant King. Are you doing any good? Well, I tried. Now, Meister's trying again. It's kind of hard to get her to answer. Now, look, you really ought to... Uh, how far away is she? It's about eight feet, Captain. I started to climb out on the ledge of this window once. She said if I came out any farther, she'd jump. Told me not to come out any farther. Do you think, you you think we can string life nets below? I got men down on the ninth floor, Captain. They're there with the manager of the building. 
They're going in every apartment and opening the windows. They're getting ready for the emergency truck. What do you say? Then you'll be able to get the nets up right away. Yes, sir. As soon as the truck comes. Oh, oh, let's see how he's doing. Uh, there's something bothering you now. There's something on your mind. Just, just come on inside and we'll talk it over. Huh? I tried that before. No, no, no. no. We'll get it straightened out. Now, look, you've got the whole police department on your side, Mrs. Wolsey. All of us. Now, if you've got any real problems, why, we can even get the commissioner up here. You see, the captain came. The captain came to help you. Well, he's here now. Look, would you like to talk to the captain? Maybe he can help you, huh? All right? Just a second. Captain Millie, I think he'll talk to you. All right. Here's the captain, Mrs. Wolsey. This is the boss, Captain Kennelly. Now, he can solve all your problems for you. Go ahead, Captain. I got your leg. Okay. Watch it, Captain. You better hold on. Yeah, I'm all right. Uh, Mrs. Woolsey, this is the captain, the boss of the whole precinct. How do you do, Miss Woolsey? Sorry to cause you all this trouble, Captain. That's all I wanted to tell you. Well, why don't you come inside and we'll talk about it? No, I'm going to jump. I don't care to live anymore. There's just nothing left, that's all. I just don't care to live anymore. Well, I don't think there's any problem that can't be straightened out. Not mine. I just don't know what to do about mine. What's that, multiplication? Yes, I think so. There's so much trouble and such a problem. I just have to jump. If I jump, I won't be any more of a problem. Well, that's not so. It might be a worse problem for many people. No. I'm going to jump. Goodbye. Goodbye, Captain. Miss Rosie. Yes. It it would be a great favor to me if you didn't. But I should. It would be a great favor. Well, I have to think about it. But I can't promise you anything. All right, Miss Wolsey. You go ahead and think about it. You are listening to 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way police work in the world's largest city. Mrs. Wolsey, apparently demented, remained on the ledge outside her apartment on the 11th floor of the East 66th Street building. Her door was locked from the inside, and we feared an attempt to break it down would cause her to jump. Officers could get only within about eight feet of her by leaning out the window of the apartment next door. For nearly an hour, Lieutenant King, commander of the 21st Detective Squad, Patrolman Meister, and I talked to her in ship, attempting to coax her back into her apartment. All of our pleas were fruitless. In the meantime, specially constructed rope life nets, 20 by 25 feet, were strung from windows on the ninth floor of the building, directly below the point where Mrs. Woolsey was perched. If she jumped, she would hit the net. But the sergeant in charge of the emergency service squad on the job informed me there was considerable chance that the nets would not hold because of lack of adequate support from above. 38 police officers from the 21st Detective Squad, the 21st Precinct, the 19th Precinct, Traffic Precinct F, and the Emergency Service Division were assigned to various tasks, both on the street and in the building. For instance, Four ESD patrolmen stood at the door to Mrs. Woolsey's apartment with axes and crowbars ready to break the door down. An ambulance from Metropolitan Hospital was standing by. In the apartment next door, Lieutenant King and I were close to the window while patrolman Meister leaned way out to talk to the woman. You might sit there all day, Captain. Well, that would be better than jumping, man. Yes, Mrs. Woolsey? The last ledge that we had, we lost, didn't we? Yeah. There was that one on Fifth Avenue, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so, man. Yes, Sergeant. Come on over here, Harry. All right. The right. elevator man, Captain. Oh, what is it? We got a telegram this morning, Mr. Mr. Wolsey. Would you like to go back inside? Well, why didn't you oh, tell us this before? I just remembered. Well, how'd you know it was for her? The Western the Union boy asked me where one. she was, Mr. Elizabeth Wolsey. You took him up there? Yeah, sure, I took him up. Well, it'd be kind of hard to write to the office. Get one of my men on the job. Let him check Western Union. Yeah, that's a good idea, man. You can try. Sergeant, grab hold of Marcus' legs here, will you? Yes, sir. Uh, you better get back to the elevator, Harry. Okay, yeah. I'm going. I'm going to be a I'll get somebody right on it, Captain. Daddy, stay there. I want to talk to you. This is getting to be a rough one, Captain. Yep. Who? Oh, she wants to talk to somebody else. I yeah, think. yeah, he's right here, Mrs. Wolsey. Do you want him to come out? All right, now you stay there. I'll get him to come right out. Now you stay there. Just don't move. That's right. 
wants to talk to you, Captain. Okay. He's coming out, Mrs. Rosie. I, I got you, Captain. Go ahead. You want to talk to me, Mr. Woolsey? I got tired talking to him. Well, why don't you go back inside and you can talk to all of us? I really don't want to go back inside. I really want to jump. That's all I want to do is jump, but I'm scared. I'm a dog, but I'm scared. Well, that's a good sign that you're scared. Something to be ashamed of. Nobody that wants me, nobody that needs me. It wouldn't make any difference to anyone. No one at all. It would make a difference to you, wouldn't it? No. It wouldn't even make any difference to me. I'm going to jump. I think I'm going to jump right now. Right now. Now, wait a minute, Miss Wolfie. I'm wasting your time. I'm wasting everybody's time. I'm just making you a fool out of myself. I tell you, it's a plain fool right now. Goodbye, Captain. Thank you. Uh, who was that telegram from, Mrs. Wolfie? A telegram. The one you got this morning. You know everything, don't you? You know, I got the telegram, you know, enough to put those ropes down there. If a person wants to do away with them, so you should just let them go ahead and do it. I don't see what business it is with the police anyway. Well, we're only trying to help you. You're not trying to help me. Trying to keep me from doing what I want to do. That's not helping. How did you know I got a telegram? Oh, the detectives found it out. How did they find it out? Well, that's their job, to find out things. Oh, that's right, I forgot. Who is it from? No. I'm not going to tell you that. I don't have to tell you that. It's none of your business. Oh, all right, if that's the way you feel about it. It's from my son. Ernest. Oh? I don't know why you're making such a fuss about it, because I'll be dead. The whole thing will be all over. What are all those people doing down there? If they leave someone alone, don't they have any respect for someone's privacy? It's a shame the way they make a spectacle out of themselves, isn't it? Yes, it is. Standing on the street like they're just making a spectacle of themselves. <laughs> My son isn't coming here. Isn't he? No. But he said he was telegraphed. Oh, I see. He lives in California, you know. Oh, yes. I haven't seen him for years. He wanted me to come out to California. I would have gone to except that I'm afraid to fly. I don't want the train either. I just can't ride on a train. I get very sick riding on trains. Sick of it, I'd be in an airplane. I guess only I've never been in one. Is there anything like this looking down now? This isn't so bad. Looking down here is very nice. Well, an airplane is a little bit more comfortable, I think, Mrs. Wolfie. I couldn't fly. I just couldn't fly. It's just smoke coming out of the chimneys over there. They ought to do something about that because it ruins my curtains. You know how much sleep there is in my curtains all the time. Well, I I'd like to see those curtains, Miss Wolfie. My wife complains about a lot of soot on hers, too. Just uh, Well, why don't you open up the door and let me look at them? No. I couldn't do that, I'm I'm going to jump. It's uh, four years since you've seen your son. Is that right? Yes. How did you know? He told me the detective found that out, too. He was in Washington. He was coming to New York to see me. Especially to see me, but he said he couldn't. Got to fly back to California to her. Telegram said if he could come, he'd telephone from the airport, but he won't come. He's not going to. The police can make a lot of money. Um, not very much. No. How much? Well, why don't you go back inside, Miss Woolsey? We can sit down and have a nice long talk about this and the soot and everything else. Hey, tell me how much you make. I'd like to know. Well, Captain makes $6,800. At all? Not very much, is it? Oh, it's all right. How much does he make? Well, who's that, Miss Woolsey? The policeman, the one who was just talking to me. Oh, Patrolman Meister? I don't know what his name is. I just know how much does he make. Well, no, uh, don't you tell me. I'd like him to tell me himself. Oh, I can tell you. Well, you might lie to me. I want him to tell me. I'd like him to tell me. All right. My son. Tell me the truth now. Mrs. She wants to talk to you. All right, Mrs. Wolsey. I'm here. What is it you want, Mrs. Wolsey? I got you, my son. Go on. Have any luck with the captain? No, she talks about everything but going in. We're working on that telegram, Captain. Yeah, it was from her son. Oh, was it? Did he tell you that? Yeah. He was supposed to come visit her, and he can't make it. No. You handling there, Sergeant? Yes, sir. I got a good hold on him. Do you think that's the reason she went out on the ledge, Captain? Well, it could be, man. She said she hasn't seen him in four years. He was supposed to come visit her today. And the telegram said he couldn't. But he tried to let her down lightly. He said if he could make it, he'd call her from the airport. Uh huh. I think I've got an idea, man. What, Captain? 
Whose apartment is this? This is Westall. Oh, yeah. Uh, Miss Westall. Yeah. What's the idea? Uh, Who is talking? Well, maybe, yeah. Can I see your telephone book? Yes, it's right here. I keep it in the cabinet. Right here, Captain. Uh, you don't happen to have Mrs. Wolfe's telephone number, do you? No, I don't. Good idea, Captain. You might have it. Maybe. Next page. Yeah, there it is. Butterfield 81598. What do you need a phone number for? Well, we don't have time to explain it now, Mr. Westall, but can we use your phone in a minute? Oh, yes, sure, if you want to. Okay, Matt, come on. Let's go talk to those emergency service men in the hall. All right. Might work. Well, oh, something's got to. Uh, you, you man. Uh, yes, Captain. <clears throat> now, look, we're going to try something. We think the reason she's doing this is connected with a telegram that was delivered this morning. It was from her son, who was supposed to visit her in New York. He said he wasn't going to, but if his plans were changed, he'd call her from the airport. Do you think it would take more than ten seconds to get that door open after you hit it? Oh, no, not that long. All right. I'm going back into Mrs. Westall's apartment. I'm going to ring the phone in, in Mrs. Woolsey's. If she goes back into her apartment to answer it, you'll get a signal from Lieutenant King who will be standing there in the door. As soon as you get that signal, you hit Mrs. Wolsey's door and get inside fast. Right, sir. Get in there fast and grab her. Yes, okay, Matt. Might work, Captain. I don't know of anything else that will. All right. You stand right here, Matt, okay? Yes, sir. My two will pass the word to Sergeant Waters. You pass it to me, and I'll give it to you. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Let's set for those bars down there. Something going to happen? Well, I uh, just want to use your phone, Miss Westall. Now, you better stand over there and get out of the way and keep quiet. All right? I'd appreciate it. Yes, anything you say. Good. Uh, Sergeant Waters. Yes, sir, Captain. I know it's not much, Mrs. Wolf. You tell Mike that we're going to try something. Get an it might bring her back into the room. When she's completely inside, you tell Mike to give you a signal. All right? Go on in. I hope so. Tell Mike. Yes, sir. I'll tell him. Uh, Mike, sir, listen to me. The captain's going to try something. All right. Now, everybody quiet. Be quiet in the room. Not a sound, please. Uh, set out in the hall, Matt? Yes, sir. Everybody's set. All right. Wait until you get the signal from me, Matt. From me, not from Sergeant Waters, okay? Okay, Captain. Sergeant Waters? Yes, sir. You tell my sir? Yes, sir. I told him. All right. Now, everyone quiet. Just stay quiet. Washington, he didn't even come to New York to see him. Not very far from Washington to New York. He could have come to see me. Don't worry about it, Miss Woolsey. I'm sure he'll come to see you now.
21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. Yeah? Well, where is he? What was he, shot? Yeah. Yeah. He's dead, huh? Well, I've got to send the ambulance anyway to pronounce some DOA. Well, was there a weapon around there? Did you look? And so it goes. Around the clock, right. through the week, every day, every year. The police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh and blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring. Or the brass ring can catch anyone. 21st Precinct. A factual account of the way the police work in the world's largest city is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolman's Benevolent Association, an organization of more than 20,000 members of the Police Department, City of New York. Everett Sloan in the role of Captain Kennelly, Ken Lynch is Lieutenant King. Featured in tonight's cast were Brian Rayburn, Doris Suzette, Harold Stone, Santos Ortega, and Frank Moss. Written and directed by Stanley Niss. Produced for CBS Radio by John Ives. Art Hannah speaking. <laughs>